9 Tax Saving Strategies for Small Business Owners and Entrepreneurs Did you know that as a small business owner or an entrepreneur, you could be sitting on a gold mine of tax savings? Yes, there are actual strategies, perfectly legal and underutilized, that could significantly reduce your tax bill. But the question is, are you taking advantage of them? Or are you, like many others, unaware or overwhelmed by the complex world of taxes? If you are, then this video is just for you. Today we're talking about nine powerful tax saving strategies specifically designed for small business owners and entrepreneurs. In 2024, if you're filing as a single individual, the tax rate on income up to $9,950 is 10% but any income between $9,951 and $40,525 is taxed at 12%, and it keeps increasing with the income brackets. All right, now let's start with the first tax saving strategy, choosing the right business structure. Whether you're a sole proprietor, in a partnership, or running a corporation, or even an LLC, the structure of your business can impact your taxes. A sole proprietorship is the simplest one, as it's owned and run by one individual, and there's no distinction between the business and the owner. You report the business income and losses on your personal income tax return. Whereas a partnership involves two or more people who agree to share in the profits and losses of a business. Partnerships can be a good choice for businesses with multiple owners or professional groups like attorneys or doctors. The partnership itself does not pay income tax. Instead, profits and losses are passed through to the partners who report them on their personal tax returns. Corporations are separate legal entities owned by shareholders and they pay income tax on their profits. In some cases, corporate profits are taxed twice. First, when the company makes a profit and again when dividends are paid to shareholders. Lastly, LLC provides flexibility of a partnership with the liability protection of a corporation. Profits and losses can get passed through to your personal income without facing corporate taxes. Choosing the right structure can help you make the most of your tax savings. Moving on to the second strategy maximizing deduction and credits. Think of tax deductions like discounts on a shopping spree. They reduce the amount of your income that's subject to tax. For example, if you're in the 22% tax bracket, a $1,000 deduction could save you $220 on your tax bill. Now, who doesn't love a good discount? Let's say you use your car for business purposes you can deduct the actual expenses of operating the vehicle, including gasoline, oil, insurance, car registration, repairs, maintenance, and depreciation. Or you can just use the standard mileage rate. In 2024, it's 58 cents per mile. So if you drove 10,000 miles for business, that's a $5,800 deduction. Now, if deductions are discounts, then credits are gift cards. They reduce your tax bill on a dollar for dollar basis. For example, the small employer health insurance credit is worth up to 50% of your premium costs. That means if you pay $10,000 in premiums, you could get a $5,000 credit. Interesting, huh? Next up, ever heard of section 179? It's a tax code that allows businesses to deduct the full purchase price of qualifying equipment and software purchase or finance during the tax year. That means if you buy or lease a piece of qualifying equipment, you can deduct the full purchase price from your gross income. Let's say you bought equipment worth $50,000 without third strategy section 179. You might depreciate that equipment over five years. That's a $10,000 deduction each year. But with section 179, you can deduct the full $50,000. The catch here is the equipment must be placed in service 
the same year the deduction is taken and there's a limit on how much you can deduct. It's around $1,050,000. Moving on to the fourth strategy, optimizing employee benefits. Providing employee benefits not only helps attract and retain top talent, but can also lead to a big savings. These benefits are generally tax deductible for the business and tax free for the employees. Let's take health insurance. If you pay for your employees' health insurance premiums, those payments are typically tax deductible for your businesses. And the best part is your employees generally don't have to include that cost in their taxable income. Interestingly, if you pay for your employees' tuition, books, and supplies, you can also deduct those costs as a business expense. So employee benefits can lead to tax savings. But what about home office deductions? If you use part of your home exclusively and regularly for conducting business, you may be able to deduct expenses related to that part. These expenses can include mortgage interest, insurance, utilities, repairs, and depreciation. There are actually two methods for calculating the home office deduction. The regular method and the simplified method. The regular method requires you to determine the actual expenses of your home office. This can be a bit complicated as you need to figure out what percentage of your home is used for business and then apply that percentage to your home related expenses. However, the simplified method is much easier. You simply multiply a prescribed rate by the square footage of your office. In 2024, the prescribed rate is $5 per square foot with a maximum of 300 square feet. So if your home office is 200 square feet, that's a $1,000 deduction. Pretty good, huh? Let's move to the sixth strategy, planning for depreciation. Businesses depreciate long-term assets for both tax and accounting purposes. For tax purposes, businesses can deduct the cost of tangible assets they purchase as business expenses. However, wait, businesses must depreciate their assets according to IRS rules. One common method of depreciation is a straight line method, which spreads out the cost of the asset equally over its useful life. Like if you buy a machine for your business that costs $10,000, and has a useful life of 10 years. You would claim a $1,000 depreciation expense each year for 10 years. There's also an accelerated method of depreciation called MACRS. You can take a larger depreciation deduction in the early years of an asset's life and a smaller deductions later. This can be a powerful tool for managing your business tax liability. Creating or contributing to a qualified retirement plan is another great way to save taxes. Contributions you make to a retirement plan are typically tax deductible, meaning they reduce your taxable income. Plus, the earnings on your contributions grow tax-free until you start making withdrawals in retirement. There are several types of retirement plans to choose from, like SEP IRA which allows employers to contribute up to 25% of an employee's pay, up to a maximum of $61,000 in 2024. A 401k plan allows employees to contribute up to $20,500 with an additional $6,500 catch-up contribution for those aged 50 and over. But if you're self-employed, you can contribute to these plans as both an employer and an employee. This means you can potentially contribute more to your retirement savings and claim even larger tax deductions. Moving on, imagine you're on a road trip with friends and you agree to share the expenses. You pay for the gas and your friend pays for the snacks. At the end of the trip, you settle up so that everyone has shared the costs equally. In the tax world, this is similar to an accountable plan. It's a reimbursement, or you can say allowance arrangement that meets three rules. 
The expenses must have a business connection. The employee must adequately account for these expenses within a reasonable period. The employee must return any excess reimbursement or allowances within a reasonable period. So let's say you send an employee on a business trip. You can reimburse them for their travel, meals, and lodging expenses. If you have an accountable plan, these reimbursements are not considered income for your employees, so they don't have to pay tax on them. And for you, the employer, the reimbursements are tax deductible business expenses. All right, let's end the road trip and return home. In the business world, this is akin to exiting your business. And just like you'd want a smooth ride home after a long trip, you'd want a smooth, tax-efficient exit from your business. There is a very useful strategy of using employee stock ownership plans, or just ESOP in short. It's a type of employee benefit plan that gives workers ownership interest in the company. The company sets up an ESOP and contributes new shares of its own stock or cash to buy existing shares. Alternatively, the ESOP can borrow money to buy new or existing shares, with the company making cash contributions to the plan to enable it to repay the loan. The beauty of ESOPs is that they are a win-win for both the business owner and the employees. The owner gets a ready market for their shares, and the employees get a stake in the business. Moreover, the contributions the company makes to the ESOP are tax deductible. Well, that's it for today. So which of these tax saving strategies are you excited to try? Do you have any other strategies that have worked for you? Drop your comments below. Before you go, don't forget to check out our recent video on NVIDIA's performance and potential for investors, stock analysis, and much more. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.